case it doesn't change anything because as a peer reviewer uh, I never consider the author's name. Sometimes I receive a paper with the author's name and sometimes uh, not. I check three dimensions in a paper. If the content is well stated, if it is well founded, and if the writing rules of the journals are followed anymore. So the name, it's, it doesn't matter for me because uh, it's not the, the point of, of, to evaluation and it's not the personal criticism of, for the answer. So uh, my observations are based on this three axes and I never use the, the author's name in, in, in my comment. I'm always uh, write my, my feedbacks in a neutral uh, uh, style. And the name is, is not important because uh, for readers, the name is not important. Readers is focused on the content in the conclusions. Uh, in the topics, in the hypothesis, is uh, the name is is not important at the first time. Readers need to know, uh, okay, what happened with this uh, research? Uh, what happened with this conclusion? What happened in this country? But not who do this research? Who uh, present this idea? This is a secondary point. Treat with the name of the, its author or not? If the peer reviewer stick to his principles, his deontology and his ethics, he will be honest and impartial. Peer reviewers pay and play a pivotal role in research publishing. The peer reviewer system exists to validate academic work to, helps and to help improve the quality of published research and to increase networking possibility with research communities. Despite criticisms, peer review is the first and the only widely accepted method for research validation so far. So I think that, that it, it should know, you know, knowing that some author reviewed, uh, sorry, wrote one paper, uh, should not change your approach uh, to peer reviewing, but it, it might in some cases. So I think that, that it is better that that the, the names are not there. Uh, some authors may have more credibility than others. I mean, this is this is real. I mean, you you may know uh, some authors to be uh, more accurate and credible than others. But I think that uh, if the the, the editor uh, that initially assessed the paper. Uh, did assess that aspect, then you don't have to do to assess that. So you don't necessarily need to know the names of the authors. But if you get to know, to, to know the name of the authors, I mean, you in that cases, you still need to, to, to forget, to try to forget that and have a, a, an objective approach to the paper. I mean, that, that's not easy sometimes. So I think it is better that uh, papers does not come with the authors uh, Identify. I think the approach of the peer reviewer changes slightly, but not substantially, when you know the author of a manuscript. The approach of the reviewer does not change substantially because you still have the same task in front of you. You still have the task of evaluating the quality and the scholarship of this manuscript. For instance, whether the argument holds together, whether there is a clear connection to contemporaneous scholarship. And that's not going to change depending on who it is. Even if a scholar has done good work in the past, they might have a manuscript that doesn't work for one reason or another because it's the beginning of a research project or because um, they're trying out something that's um, 
very experimental. Likewise, a scholar who may have done less respected work in the past may now have produced an amazing manuscript because they finally worked out this one idea that they've been working on for years. It changed the, um, pro the approach can change slightly because you now know more about the author. So that if you're less familiar with who it is, there's a possibility to search online to find out more about the author's background. And knowing that background, you can adjust your comments. For instance, if it's someone outside your field, you can be a little more forgiving in, in critiquing whether they have included all the relevant scholarship. And you could perhaps in, um, think about other questions. For instance, whether they have introduced new, new um, ideas and new approaches that they bring from their own um, area of interest. And finally, again, in terms of um, meeting ethical norms and adjusting um, ethics of um, reviewing, I think the main issue, again, is making sure to distance yourself as far as you can from any preconceptions that you may have about the author. And a good way to do this would be to focus on the text as much as possible, to really engage with how the, the for instance, how the argument is being constructed and the types of sources that are being cited. So, um to answer your question, no, it should not. Um, a reviewer should not be influenced by the identity um, of an author, and they should maintain professionalism and ethical standards, as um, I had mentioned earlier. And the focus should be on the work, not on the author. However, some reviewers can be tempted, you know, to write a positive review for authors they know. Um, and the reverse is true. If they don't like the author, um, it can also affect the kind of review they write. So I think um, it goes both ways. But the focus, the focus, as I mentioned earlier, should be on the work, not on the author. Um, that That is ethical. You can change your approach if you know those authors are directly competing with you. And again, this is something I don't like because I think research, research should not be about competition, but collaboration. Thus, I think the way to go is not to think about the authors, but only focus on the science. And I, I think this is also why some journal ask you whether there are scientists that you don't want to review your manuscript, as they mean there may be direct competitors. But again, like this, this is always a bit complicated we are humans so it's hard to not you know like if you know the authors of the paper it's hard to not treat them differently and i think the best way would be to straight call for a um, conflict of interest potentially if you have anything for or against uh, those authors but that's not the way we do when the when the identity of the authors uh, are revealed sometimes or the identity of the authors is revealed sometimes, it's not impossible that the, 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 the pattern of review changes or the, the 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 criticism of the reviewer can become either positive or negative. My thinking or my thought of that is uh, when a good work for example, it's coming from a developing country or a developing world to be reviewed by to be reviewed by researchers in the developed world. It's not impossible that the researcher will feel like or the reviewer will feel like how the uh, a researcher or someone from developing world could come up with an innovative uh, research like this. That's that's very possible. So. In that sense, he may want to criticize the work negatively to reject the manuscript. So that, that's, that's very possible. However, um, I think every reviewer should be open-minded, uh, scientific-minded, and should be fair in all circumstances. Mm -hmm.